my definition of a professional is somebody who can get results consistently. Yes. This is Derek Moneyberg, and today I get to sit with Henry Hooft. Henry's been uh, kickboxing for quite a long time. He's from the Netherlands, and he's got over 100 professional fights. And uh, he's one of the most important coaches in MMA. He's trained some of the, the world's biggest champions. So you have 24 people working in your gym that are currently in the UFC. And, yes. and another, how many in Bellator? Uh, well, in total, we have at this moment around like 62 fighters in the gym, but around 40, there are 40 like high level guys. We have uh, 24 in the UFC, probably 12 in Bellator, maybe six, seven in one FC, and then uh, the rest is PFL. We have a lot of PF PFL guys, so yeah, it's all professionals, no amateurs. So every there, everyone there is real pro pro fighter. Pro pro fighter, yes, yes. Um, I wanted to bring Henry on. I think that you know you have some perspectives that are very in alignment with mine. We never had uh, a conversation about some of these things, but you know things that I, I talk about with my clients. I, I should explain the type of clients that come see me. They're they're people that they're already good at something. They they already they learned how to learn. They yeah. already developed some skill. They learned how to learn, and um, you know I, I don't want to work with the people that are they have this magic thinking or they, they want to get rich quick or they want you know immediately results with no work. Yes. I, I just laugh at this because it's, uh, it's as stupid as me saying like, oh, I'd like to have your kickboxing skills you know, like this weekend. Yes, with no yes, <laughs> yes. It's, it's, it's just uh, unimaginably dumb, but these thoughts are pervasive. These thoughts are everywhere that people think, uh, you know, oh, you know, if, I, if, they, if they work on something for a couple hours and they don't get results, they're frustrated. And, yeah. When, when I think about things that I got good results, that uh, I had this conversation with Mike Chandler. We, we were we, here in my, we were in Fort Lauderdale. We had uh, we were sitting in the back of a Rolls Royce car, and I was chatting with Mike about this. He, he said he spent uh, you know every day of his life for 20 years. He was an athlete. Yes. Every day, every day, working, working, and he said he you know he spent you know 12 years at Bellator. At that time, he had about one year at, at UFC at the time that we had this conversation. And he says, so you know, 13 years as a professional, and people think like you're like an overnight success. Yeah. And we were laughing about that. That I'm like, you know, well, you know, I I made my first entrepreneurial money when I was seven, and now I'm 42. So you know, it took me 35 years to be an overnight success. Yes. <laughs> so yes. <laughs> it's crazy how people think that everything just. The same is in our sport. Sometimes people come from other gyms and they think, let me drink that magic water and I will win my next five fights. But that's not <laughs> going to happen, you know. So it's a lot of work, and like you just said too, uh, you need to create a system. That's the, what I believe. Skills takes a lot of time to build, and also uh, you also try to try to recognize on your students if they're really fighters because there's a very big difference. You can be a very good athlete and even good fighter in the gym, but that doesn't mean you do it for millions of people when the camera is on and everybody wants you to win. That's a whole different skill set. Yeah. What is the difference in your mind between that distinction between somebody who they're they're a good athlete, maybe they're a good fighter in the gym, yeah. versus somebody who could really be a, a star that can perform under that pressure? Well, to be honest, uh, I can give a very good example because I myself, uh, I think I'd be a very good example. I come from the Netherlands, and uh, when I was young, I was I was a talented fighter from the beginning, really smart. Uh, it's hard to say about yourself, but a technical fighter with my brain and 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 and, uh, and in the trainings I was, and that's with most of the fighters in the trainings they're always a little better than most of the fighters than in the in the fight because in the fight so much more comes than just fighting and your opponent because you got the nerves, uh, did I do enough, uh, the, the tension, the people that come look for you, so it's always a little harder. But um, that's a, that's a very big difference. You see people that just when the lights go on they change, uh, and. Uh, and, and later on in your life, you, you, you start to recognize that, you know, it's also the focus to keep the focus dur during training camp and then during the fight. It's also a thing that people don't train enough. I think um, skills are very important, men mentality and what you just said about Michael Chandler, he's a very big example. Uh, same with Kamaru Usman, Gilbert Burns, that these people come an hour before practice start. Mm -hmm. They start warming up, they put everything nice, their the, the, the hand wraps are clean, the gloves smell good. They, they take care of all their stuff. They're real professional uh, people at that level. But I think if you start as a student, uh, as a teacher, you need to start learning these people that nothing is for nothing, like you just said. You cannot just come in there and think, uh, uh, I trained for two years and I'm going to fight and beat everybody else. No, that's what everybody else is thinking. You need to try to create a system and also feel um, where you fit in and uh, that there's always a, 
a level and then there's a next level and you always need to look for that because fighting is a very lonely sport you know you train with a lot of people but at the moment when when you're there in the cage alone and i can say it as a fighter myself you're just there with that other guy and it's really weird in the fight fighters will tell you th your opponent looks much bigger than you and when you see him in the <laughs> way and he looks good but when in the fight look better the smell of the fight the referee and when it just when it starts you know it's and and i also said to the to a lot of people that's not for everybody and, but you can create create it a little bit in in the gym but most of the time i see it i see in a fighter if he is the guy that shows up in fights that doesn't mean that he was going to win every fight but he shows up in fights and i can also see when people maybe are really good and you're not a less martial artist if you're good in the gym and not in the fight but if it's your profession you need to do it in the fight if it's for martial arts i have respect for everybody that does martial arts because at the end of the day it's a way of living and it's not just fighting but if it's your profession you need to have all these aspects and there's only a couple of people that have that and i'm very lucky and fortunate to have been working with with people like that you know, you know a, a professional my definition whatever the dictionary says meh, my definition of a professional is somebody who can get results consistently yes they don't have to be in a good mood if, if they got a little headache or a little tummy ache they're not gonna no probably not going to mention it no they're just gonna they, they didn't sleep good last night but a professional is somebody that gets results consistently yeah doesn't matter what happened in their life. Doesn't matter they had a little fight with their girlfriend. Doesn't matter their their puppy isn't feeling well. Yeah. They're going to show up and perform consistently. Yeah. And, you know, if you think of like what a doctor is, I think that's the best example. That's very relatable to everyone. That like, imagine you go to the emergency room with an injury, and the doctor says, oh, "Oh, that looks bad, man." But you know, I'm just about to go to lunch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's I, a great example, though. I, I got yeah. a little headache. You know, I'm going to take a couple Advil. Can go to lunch, and yeah. you know, was, I yeah. hope it works out good. You know, I'm, I'm, I'll check up on you later. <laughs> you know, if it's convenient. <laughs> if I feel good. <laughs> so, you know, uh, that's uh, uh, people when, when they hear the professional. A lot of times in America, they think you know, doctor, lawyer, something like this. Yeah. And you know, a, a professional fighter. What you're saying is, is a man who's going to or a woman who's going to show up. I'm not politically correct, but there's yeah. a lot of women fighters yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, uh, is a man or a woman who's going to show up, and they're going to perform consistently. Yeah. And, I don't think, uh, I've, I've talked to a lot of athletes, I have friends that are, you know, football players or professional football and, uh, uh, you know, boxing and other sports. And, uh, you know, when, when I ask, um, you know, on, on game day, when it's, when it's Super Bowl day or when it's, a, you know, a big fighting yeah, event, yeah, 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 yeah. you know, by the time that you're skilled enough that you're, you're fighting for the championship or you're, you're, you're playing for a Super Bowl ring, you have an accumulation of injuries by the time that your skills are good enough. Yes. It means you're you're a little older now, probably. You have some injuries. Yeah. Something hurts this day. There's uh, you know you'd be lucky if you were 85 percent good on yeah. at the most important yeah. moment. Is yeah. that fair? That's 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 really fair because if people if people in five week uh, have come to me and have have no injuries, especially when they start talking, I feel so great. Or the day before the fight, that is the most common thing. What you hear? I slept great. Listen, again, <laughs> I I have my fights. I was a fighter myself. I started fighting when I was 13. So, to the end, to my last fights, it's the same thing. You, the feeling that you have to perform, you're not scared of your opponent because you've seen opponents already through your whole career. It's not that, but did I do enough? Do I don't get tired? The small questions. But the closer you get to the fight, at the, uh, and, and you you want to be uh, how you say when you train you want to be like oh I have, we have to be careful I'm fighting in two weeks you start doing that your training goes mm -hmm. so we mostly temper off uh, close to the fight but everybody has small injuries a Kamaru fought probably the, the last couple of fights uh, also but also when I was with him with hands that were hurt and he still knocked people out with knees that are bad he still took people down same with Michael Chandler same with Gilbert Burns. These guys have injuries because they go hard for five days a week. Mm -hmm. And my, my, my son-in-law, he plays football, so uh, he's married with my daughter, and he, uh, he's, still, he's still young. And uh, he comes to the gym sometimes, and he looks the fights. He's a big fan. And he says the same thing. For the money that these people make and the work they do, that's just uh, crazy. When he, hit, he hits the backs, he doesn't even know how to make a fist. But when he hits the backs, he hurts his hands. And he said, these people do that for real. <laughs> and then they also think that they're rich, that they make hundred thousands of money. But 
I had just a guy fighting in the UFC making 12 and 12, and then you mm -hmm. lose a fight, you make $12,000 in three months. Mm -hmm. So injuries are always going to be there, but like you just said, the real pro finds a way. Even in the fight, there were fights when I was with Michael, uh, with Eddie Alvarez, I trained Eddie Alvarez before. His eye was, was closed when he fought Gilbert Melendez, and the referee came in the duct and they wanted to stop the fight. He said, you got another eye, man, don't worry about that guy. He trained with one eye. And he came out and he won that fight. You know, the trust between the coach and the, and, and the fighter is, has to be at that level. But injuries are always going to be there. It's a full contact sport and people have to understand, we talk about sport, this is fighting. Sports is basketball, NFL, this is fighting. It's, it only starts really when it, when, they f when it starts to get tough and when you're hurt. And one more thing I always say to my guys, at every seminar that I do or young fighters that I get in my gym, there's three things in, <laughs> in fighting. You're going to get hurt, you're going to be tired and you're going to be underpaid. That's the three keys that I always say to everybody else. So don't fight because you want to have a girlfriend or you want to be, <laughs> be a cool guy. You fight because you love to fight. That's it. You start with that. That's just a f still as a coach now, when I walk behind these guys, I wish I could do what they could do. And I tell them right before the fight, believe me, as soon as you're not, if you stop fighting, you can't fight anymore. That's when you really know how good, how good of a feeling it is to fight another human being, you know? So, enjoy the moment, although you're gonna get hurt, you know? But yeah, I always say that to the guys. It's a special type of personality that uh, you have to have a calling for that, you have to have a passion for that. You're not doing it for the money. No, you it's, can't. It's, there's very few people that make a lot, a lot of money yeah. that, uh, I make a lot more money in the stock market than yes. these guys make. In, yes. you know, sometimes in a day, frequently in a day, I make more money in the stock market than a champion gets paid yes. for at UFC. Yes. And I'm not down on that. I, you know, I, I've met Dana a couple times. I think he's built a fabulous business, and yeah. he has a lot of critics. I, I think it's easier to be a critic than go build a better business. You know. I was living on my coach's uh, living room on a mattress. You know, I ended up like just bouncing at a bar. I'd been a cop. I quit my job. And Derek Moneybird presents. Ten Commandments of Wealth. Took, took the gamble on myself to become a successful uh, professional fighter and make it to the UFC or pride and at the time. And am I making a sacrifice right now or am I just in investing in a better future? So it's easier for me to do those, to make those decisions when I think about it is like, oh. Yeah, absolutely. I, and, I, and now that you mentioned it, that having to actually really process and think about it, I think that word sacrifice is kind of like i believe it's the word that the ones at the top kind of use to make everyone else feel better about it because when you're at the top now you realize that that was an investment was everything just golden and easy and handed to you or do you have a little struggle with yourself along the way no yeah within uh in 2013 and 2015 i was living out of my car full time and I was too proud to ask for help. Like how ridiculous is that? You're living out of your car and you think you know it all. And 2015, that's when I kind of hit, I knew that I didn't know it all. So why not find experts in that and really shortcut that? I thought I was gonna just chip away. I thought I was just gonna read books till I was an expert. Mm -hmm. you know, I never really talked to anyone that actually did it. It's been about a week since I've joined the 10 Commandments of Wealth program, and there's so many interviews that are offered in this program. I'm inside the Derek Moneybird 10 Commandments of Wealth program. This is an awesome program that you're gonna love. I'm gonna use the principles and the knowledge from this program to help me boost my leads in my marketing firm. Buy this program, it's a wonderful investment for your future. You won't regret it, and you'll absolutely love it.